Hi, I saw you got a huge amount of plants here, which are herbs, and they smell absolutely wonderful. Can you tell us a bit who are you and where all these plants are from? Well, thank you very much for being so nice about the plants. My name's Jeff. Uh, I'm a medical herbalist, and I work on a herb farm. We grow all these herbs, medicinal herbs as well as culinary herbs, mm -hmm. the ones you can see here. And we've come from Saffron Walden. We're a little farm in a village called Rickling. Right. Saffron Walden, which is uh, the north part of Essex. Okay. We've come down here this morning, and some of the herbs you've got here, I think you noticed or mentioned the uh, black currant sage. Yes. This is a black currant sage. Mm -hmm. and these beautiful, beautiful purple flowers in them. Mm -hmm. They look a little bit like an orchid, don't they? Yes. Got a very, very sweet black currant-y smell. Mm -hmm. You rub the leaves, the flavour. Mmm, that's very nice for desserts. Right. And also gives, uh, you can use it in savoury dishes as well. Right. It'll grow outside its... It takes care of itself. It's semi-hardy, which means you may want to protect it mm -hmm. from frost cut. But on the other hand, if it's in a fairly sheltered environment, it'll be okay over the winter. We have them outside the farm where we grow these herbs, and it gets snowed on every year and it comes back year after year. They're fine. Let me take you down here and show you a few more of the herbs. Here's bulk standard thyme, as in parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Mm -hmm. Most people don't realise there's quite a few varieties of thyme. This is a lemon variegated thyme. This one here. Uh, this one, for instance, is... Yeah. This one, for instance, is a golden thyme. Mm -hmm. Now, they've all got slightly, subtly different flavours and tastes. Mm -hmm. But one of my favourites is this one, the orange thyme. Okay. Now, this has got a beautiful scent when you rub the leaves. Mm -hmm. Give the leaves a good squeeze just to get the essential oil, get the smell. Mm, now, bees, that's beautiful. Yeah, bees love this. Mm -hmm. if you put this in your garden, you have thousands of bees crawling all over it constantly. Or, uh. Right, for the average person just starting out with a with herb garden who wants to make something in maybe large pots or a window box or maybe a small little patch of garden outside, some of the common hardy ones are things like thyme and a sage. We've got, say, a green sage here. Mm -hmm. Parsley is a good one. Mm -hmm. Nice biennial herb, which means it'll last two years before flowering and going to seed. But what we've got down here made up is some herb baskets, which are a good idea. Do for yourself. You can actually get baskets quite cheaply from your local garden centre. Mm -hmm. And if you make up a herb garden, as you can see, they're all quite happy growing together. We've got here some chives, some golden curly marjoram, mm -hmm. parsley. Yeah. Here we've got the orange thyme that I showed you earlier. Yeah. And this one's savoury, winter savoury. Now mm -hmm. this is an old traditional English herb. Mm -hmm. It's very good for helping digestion, helping to digest the food. And of course, if you digest the food better, then of course you get more benefit from the nutrition because mm -hmm. you absorb the nutrients more. Yes. So that helps you to absorb all the amino acids as well as the vitamins from the food. So something like a basket like this, yeah. how do we actually care for them? Because, okay, we can water it, but we don't want to put you know, sort of like feet into it. Oh no, you don't want to put baby bio or anything like that into food that you're going to eat. Correct. But what you can get, which is quite organic and quite nutritious to the plant and safely to eat, is you can get seaweed extract from your, any garden centre or plant shop will do it. And you make it up, I think, into uh, two pints or with one teaspoon of seaweed extract to a pint or two pints of water. And just feed it with that, say, every six weeks. Okay. Or another thing you can do, if you want to make your own, you can't get seaweed extract, perhaps you're in a small village or you're away from big store, is you can actually grow comfrey. Comfrey is a really traditional plant. It looks like um, this. This grows quite large. Right. It'll grow to about six foot tall in the early spring, and then it just collapses under its own weight. Mm -hmm. But this makes beautiful compost and beautiful feed. Right. What you can do is you can chop the leaves up mm -hmm. and dug, dig it into the soil, or another way of doing it is actually just chop it up, put it into a watering can, fill it with water, leave it for a couple of weeks, beautiful nutrients okay. to feed your plants with. So this is the total organic way of actually... Absolutely. So Organic, nutritious, and it will do your plants the world of good. And besides which, this will encourage dragonflies and bees into your garden. Right, so they get cross-pollinations and your gardeners will be happier Absolutely. and all that sort of thing. And you can even use this as a traditional medicine in the home. So what, what would that do it's, me good for? Well, the old name used to be knit bone. It's a very good wound healer, mm -hmm. but you can use it for broken bones, 
fractured bones, splinters, things like that. It has a substance in it that they've recently discovered, about 10 years ago, called allantoin. And what it does is it actually attracts mineral growth into your bone. So it actually physically attracts the minerals into, to rebuild the bone matrix. Right, so someone that actually have fractured bone syndrome, they don't like drinking milk or that sort of thing, this would be quite good to Chop have. this up, yep. make a poultice out of it, chop it up in, into a dampness, put it on, mm -hmm. onto the punt, put some bandage over it, yep. and then just wrap some plaster around that to seal it, mm -hmm. and four and a half. And, <laughs> sorry, I'm just uh, <laughs> having to sell them here. Briefly. Yeah. And that will, actually, you'll notice a difference within a couple of days. Great. Uh, we grow these herbs in the farm in Ripping, and we travel to all over England uh, every weekend between March and the end of October. For instance, we were last in Brighton just two weeks ago at the Brunswick Centre, and we're coming back again next week and the week after. We're often in South of England. But if you want to know where we are, our website is www.herbalhaven. Not heaven, haven.com. Herbalhaven.com. And if you Google us, you can find us, and you just email us to say, where, when are you next going to be in our area? Because there's six or seven of us that live on the farm together and we all grow the herbs together and every weekend we all go off in six or seven different directions. Okay, now, do you do mail order? We do do mail order. If you get on our website, you can actually order over the web now. It's okay. a new service we've started off in the last month or two. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it works really well. So if we run short a bit of uh, parsley and, and whatever and we know when you're next, next in town, we can just order it and say we come and pick it up or we could just get the postman if they don't squash it in yeah, the post. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome to come to the farm. We do welcome people to come to the farm and have a look around and see how we grow the herbs. We don't use any pesticides right. or anything unhealthy for you in growing at all. In fact, our total pest control is newts, <laughs> frogs and toads. <laughs> And if you're at all interested in making simple herbal remedies mm -hmm. into herbal medicine in your own home, in your own kitchen, we, on our website, under the forum tab, we have a section on making simple herbal remedies in your own home with some of the herbs we sell and some of the herbs you've probably got growing in your own garden. That's great. Thanks very much, Jeff. Very welcome. See Cheers. you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.